Hello, my name is Megan, and my talk for Grux this year is on how to design for player persistence. Now, in games, we usually want games to be at this ideal level of challenge, where it's not too easy, but not too hard. It's just right in this sweet spot. However, it's really tricky to design for this sweet spot, and it's very easy to design challenges that are frustrating for players and cause them to quit. So how can we avoid this? Well, it comes back to player motivation. Players can be motivated to persist a lot under certain conditions. Now, this is a brief summary of some of what I've discovered in my PhD research. I've drawn heavily on self-determination theory, which you can read up on. But what it says, basically in a nutshell, is if we satisfy our three needs for autonomy, competence, and relatedness, we will be more intrinsically motivated to undertake that activity. And this is what we want to aim for if you want to encourage persistence and perseverance in your players. Autonomy being control and having choice over things, competence, feeling good at doing something, and relatedness, having a connection to other people. The three games I used in my research were very cognitively challenging video games, The Witness, Untitled Goose Game, and Boa Is You, but with controls that were quite easy to learn, even pe for people who don't usually play video games. The three cases I briefly wanted to talk about, and these aren't their real names, are Arthur, Terry, and Daisy. And these three cases uh, I really wanted to dig down into because they had such a wide variety of motivation for playing video games as a hobby. So Terry, when he played the puzzle video games, felt very frustrated. He did not enjoy the experience as he felt the games were controlling and pushing him towards finding one particular solution. Terry was driven uh, by this motivation to have control and choice over his gameplay. So his favorite games are strategy games where he has a lot of control over his actions and how he plays the game and he's quite happy to persevere in those games and lose you know up to half an hour of progress and try again because he feels that any failure and mistakes he makes were his fault and he's happy to go back and learn from them but in the puzzle games not so much daisy was highly driven by relatedness so she loved playing games to connect with other people. When we played the puzzle games, she was playing by herself, so she would persist up to a point, but then give up quite quickly. However, she described to me that she would persist a lot in really difficult World of Warcraft raids. I asked her what the difference was, and she said it was because she was playing with other people and with friends. So they shared that frustration and they could persist and solve the puzzle together. And also, even if they didn't end up winning or finishing the raid, they still had a fun experience together. Finally, Arthur, who is highly driven by competence, loved the puzzle games. He found overcoming the challenges in the games gave him this euphoric feeling. And so he was motivated to persist through the really difficult challenges, even taking a break from the game and coming back to it a day or two later. Because solving the challenges made him feel competent and that was a really good motivating feeling for him. Even in describing playing multiplayer games like Overwatch, he describes mostly playing in order to improve his own skills. So some very quick design recommendations to tap into these three strands of motivation. For autonomy, it comes down to offering your players choice where possible. So this could be choice over avatar, choice over customization of features, or even choices over key bindings for your game. And a bonus, this will also improve the accessibility of your game. For relatedness, it comes down to either for narrative games, having players feel a sense of connection to the characters in the game, or for not necessarily narrative games, but other games, um, offering social spaces for players to connect. Now, if your game is single player, you could do something like what Dark Souls have done, where players can leave messages for one another in the game world. So there's still a sense of social connectedness, even though it's a single player game. And finally, for competence, it comes down to really good ordering and sequencing of challenges so that they start easy and become progressively more difficult. So players have a chance to build up their skill set and also helping visualize progress so players can look back and see how far they've come when they're stuck on something very difficult. Thank you for listening. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch, I have papers you can read and I'm happy to answer any questions. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn.
All this is possible thanks to our sponsors, Platus Cloud, Player Research, Balsamic, Adobe, the book How to Be a Games User Researcher, UX is Fine, Antidote, and Sketch.